Mike Lynn is getting ready to come and present on um, pre-stress mechanically fastened FRP to retrofit existing pre-stress concrete bridge beams. That is a lot. Good afternoon, everyone, and um, thank you for attending the presentation. It's always tough for starting things off again after lunch. Uh, so my name is Rudy Saracino, one of the um, co-presenters of this, I guess we could say. Uh, a professor in the structural engineering group at, at NC State University. Uh, and just to give you a little bit of background uh, before I hand it over to Mike, who was really part of the team of graduate students at the time who, who did the work. Uh, this uh, is the culmination of uh, NCDOT funded research project uh, starting in uh, AY 2018. And uh, the, the technology transfer that has developed uh, since then uh, after about four years of, of research that was undertaken. Uh, I, I heard a lot over the past day about signature bridges and high value bridges. This is the other extreme of the spectrum. Um, this is the bread and butter bridges of which uh, all of you have hundreds of these kinds of bridges in your state uh, that need attention where uh, the consequences of a load posting or a closure is very disruptive to local community, rural areas, affects school buses, um, emergency services, where detours are in the order of several miles uh, and provides a huge direct and indirect cost. So with that little intro, um, I'll hand it over to Mike, who's going to continue with the rest of the presentation. Thank you, Dr. Sorsino. So I'm going to start my presentation. So here's the outline. Like I'm going to give some like small introduction related to the background, retrofit design, and the like research objective. And then we start. We'll jump to the like some field demonstration and the field applications. And then we'll f in the in the end we're going to say some like give some like installation and the inspection recommendations. So precious concrete bridges have been like widely used since in like 1950s, 60s, like and uh, like those like sea channel beams or coal slab are like widely used in like sub sub, -sub areas. And after being in service for like more than 50 and 60 years, they have experienced a lot of deterioration, like starting from concrete spalling, and then the precious strain like exposed, get corroded, and then at the end they will just lose their cross section because of corrosion. Which will be like, like need like additional attention. Like the DOTs need to be do some low posting, or even worse, close the bridge until they can be scheduled to be replacement. To date, so up to now, like uh, NC DOT start using the coast slab as a new construct bridges. As for C channel being, they are stopping using that. However, there's still maybe more than like 250 C channel bridge located in NC DOT at uh, NC State. And uh, then more than like 80% of them are being like load posted and uh, or even close the bridge. So we need to provide some actions, like maybe do some repair, like to extend those bridges service life until like DOTs can replace the bridge. So the deterioration will also affect the actual load rate, like which is defined by the, into the two categories, inventory and operating. So the inventory that is defined by like the traffic under the routine traffic, there is no incremental damage, and there's a, like a zero tensile stress limit in the concrete section. So it is kind of a little bit conservative stress limits for the coastal area, the bridge located coastal area. As for the operating, it's defined as like the traffic under like an infrequent and heavier traffic, with a little small incremental damage over time under the maximum life load permissible. So the idea, idea can be better understanding through like this like moment diffraction curve of the precious concrete beams. For the solid line here, we saw like this like the undamaged beam behavior with the inventory remain located in the elastic region, so there's no damage it will initiate. As for the operating, it will in intercept as like the point that just pass through the elastic region and uh, just go through the elastic region a little bit. So for sure, there's some incremental damage over time. As for the deterioration part, you can see this, like the dash line here. So with the loss of a pre-stretching strain, we'll lose the camber. So initial point would like, go to shift to the right of the di uh, diagram, and the, the capacity would, would drop. So which will result in the original involuntary remit of the beam will 
intersect as a just pass through, maybe somewhere a little bit further, pass through on the industrial region. As for the operating part, it will go to the in industrial region with a higher diffraction uh, uh, behavior. So for that, we need to do some repair. We need to address those problem with the regular like a FRP or wide app system repair. It can only increase the automatic like, fracture capacity, but not the initial camber or restore the pre-stressing part. So we need to address or find a repair solution that can pre-stress the system so we can improve or lift up the low rating. With those like, motivations that we developed the pre-stressed MFRP retrofit uh, system. So the system is trying to, we have to, we design the beam, uh, system to be in, can be in service for three to five years. It's a rapid installation. You don't need any surface preparation and no epoxy bonded is required. You can use a very simple tool and a minimal scale with a low cost and a low labor effort. So, and the, most of the like, hardware is commercially available. Like, you can order this from like Home Depot, like McMaster or something. And the most important part, that like, we have to restore the pre-stress losses and the camber. And, the, and the, the, another part is that is the system needs to be easy to pre-stress the FRP. Like, we don't need any like, the hydraulic jacks involved. We can use a like, very simple regular wrench to, use, to do the pre-stressing. And then follow up, it's easier for DOT to do the inspection. And then, so this is like the commercial available like FRP plate we use for this system. So it's like four inches width and one eighth of thickness FRP plate. So we have like a longitudinal carbon fiber inside and some like glass fiber transfer that to transverse glass fiber in the plate. So we can increase some like bearing stress of the plate itself. So after like doing more research on that, we develop a system. It can be installed, the repair system can be installed at the side of the C channel stem. So here is the cross section where you can see the system installed on the side of the C channel stems. And for elevation, you can see here. So the blue, blue here represent the FRP plate. And it is like a magnetic fasten bolted to the steel connector plate and the go to like connect to the pin connection and ultimately bolted to the concrete stem. And we got a like dead end and life end. So life end is the kind of, the, they're very similar to dead end except one important part, which is the turnbuckle system. So we can like stress the FRP play or tension the stress, uh, tension the FRP play by simply rotate the turnbuckle plate using a regular wrench. So with that, we can know that like, with that, we can reach to the desired design FRP uh, pre-stressing force for the use of the repair system. So here shows some picture of the data and the diving we have done in the, from the lab testing. In the past five years, we developed this retrofit system from like a design of both connections, starting from like static loading, fatigue, and the sustained load. And we validated those de this design from through the full scale experiment from like doing like the fractural testing and the like shear testing. And we also developed the design procedure for the low rating analysis. And we got very lucky we have the chance to do some field demonstration on the real in-service bridge, because like we this project funded by NCDOT, and so with this like uh, like application, application we are able to in increase the low posting or reopen the cross bridge, and we also conduct some like long-term field monitors for the future reference. So this is the first field demonstration bridge we done uh, like a couple years ago in April 2019. So this bridge is located in Franklin County, Franklin County, North Carolina. So it was like built in 1961, and we previous repair only like patches, which is not going to increase any like fracture capacity of the deterioration beam. And then we install the, our system as a demonstration. So we can prove that this system is, can be rapid and easy to install. And the, the system only complete by four NCDOT maintenance crew. 
and then after like install, like I went to the bridge to take some like uh, do some monitoring or take look at condition. I've been in service for more than one and a half years uh, in October 2020. So everything looks very good. Whereas no like obvious damage initially on the FRP system. And the, the most recent visit in May 2022, we found that this bridge already been replaced to the like new bridge. So new coast star bridge, which is one of the purpose trying to extend the service life to until the deteriorated bridge being replaced to the new bridge. So with that experience, it gives us some confidence of doing the real fair applications. So it happened to be there's a one bridge located in Samson County bridge, Samson County and North Carolina, so was closed after the biennial inspection due to a very severe deterioration and uh, a lot of defection while seeing the traffic pass by. So DOT decided to close the bridge. So which caused like the six miles detour route, detour lanes, and they impact local business and the farming. So we can see a picture here shows some like fracture deterioration and then some like end deterioration which, were, which raised out a little bit concern regarding the shear capacity of the deteriorated beam. The purpose of the repair is try to reopen the bridge, extend the service life of the bridge, then minimize the commuting impact, and then determine how much money we're going to spend, the cost, benefit, the repair cost. So for that, we got two deterioration on this bridge, fracture and the shear. So with the fracture deterioration, so we'll just use the regular repair we design to address the fracture deterioration. As for the shear deterioration, we put additional shear strengthening plate, which is a, a steel plate at the end region, so to, in, to give some additional shear capacity of the deterioration. So that after everything is said, everything is prepared, we're starting from the installation procedure. So first, we need to locate the rebar or the store up or pre-stressing strength on inside the concrete stand. So we can prevent like heating the string while drawing the holes on the those concrete stem. And uh, it's very interesting is that so we got the design plan, cross section plan drawing from NCDOT, but I mean the detail is a little bit off. So we have to locate that a little bit carefully so we can save much more time while doing the installation. Then we draw the holes on the on FRP on FRP plate, so we do that in the lab, or the DOT want to do that, they can do that on their workshop. So the, this part is a little bit in, important, so we will try to do it offside because we want to make sure the holes are aligned with each other, so we can avoid some uneven like bearings while pre-stressing the FRP. And it's also that if you already done that outside, you can save a lot of time doing the installation. Then the third step is that we drill holes on the concrete stems. Then we tighten the, we install the fixed anchor plate and the tighten with the bolt with the, like the certain level of the tight, uh, uh, torque. Then we torque the, uh, we, can, we, make an, we fasten the anchor bolt to the FRP plate through the uh, uh, connection plate. So with the 60 foot pounds torque value, which is specified like this torque value can prevent the premature fatigue failure. Then the last part is that we're pre-stressing the FRP plate. You can see here that like one person is hold, rotating the, FR, uh, the turn buckle body to pre-stressing the plate, and the other person is holding that just prevent from prevent the plate from rotating during the pre-stress procedure. And then here is the like the retrofit result after the repair, and the, after like. 20 month, one months of repair. So with this, after one, 20 month, one months in service, there's no substantial like damage, like deterioration on repair systems. The only thing we found is that there's some corrosion initiate, like the rusty part on the steel element, but that is expected. And the weird plan is that we're going not to put the system here for a lot of years, just for like certain years to try to buy some time for the deteriorate bridges. We also did some long-term monitoring 
on the uh, system itself. So starting from the like, mountain from the FRP elongation. So we monitor the elongation through the Williams mark, which is, you can see here's a two line. So before we pre-stress in the FRP, we have marked the line, just mark the like, straight line on the FRP and on the concrete stand. And then when we pre-stress it, so you are going to extend the FRP plate, so you will see the gap or the distance between those two lines. Those lines can be those distance can be calculated through some equations, and by using like a certain value of pressure force. For example, if you are applying 19 kips, so there's certain amount of distance you can do the calculation to that. So that will give us a very easy way to know what kind of level of pressure we are reaching and also prevent some future inspection to know, okay, if that reach to the decrease too much, we need to pay attention on that. We also did some closer monitoring on the FRP stream by installing the strain gauges on the FRP stress, uh, the FRP plate so just to know better uh, the behavior from the research perspective. And uh, we found that the, uh, the trend is very similar as the FRP elongation. Like after the certain, like after two weeks after the repair, it become very stable. And then those two weeks, kind of like the system try to set down, settle down to adjust with the beam itself. So that gives them some time to adjust, but after that, it remain very stable. In general, from this diagram, you can see a very stable, it got some like going down and up, that's because of the seasonal temperature. But in general, like it's very stable from the like strain be changing behavior. So with that, it's going to make small small summary of that is that the bridge was reopened immediately after the install installation of a repair. So we repaired six beams, six C channel beams with 12 stands in five days with six NCDOT crew, and they never done this repair before. No heavy tools or equipment were used during the installation. The only heavy tool we use for the entire installation is a hammer drill to drill the holes. And the cost benefit. So for the total cost during the time of the installation for one beam, two stems, is roughly $2,000 for the material. This was the first computer retrofit application using the precious MM5P plate. And it also provides some field data for the future reference. And as I mentioned before, the, the season remained in very good condition after 21 months in service. There's a plan for this bridge so the plan, the bridge is going to schedule to be replaced in early 2023. And the long-term mountain will keep conducting, keep collecting data until the beam being replaced. And the retro beam are planned to be tested in the lab. So once the superstructure is replaced, so we can obtain the residual capacity of the retro beam. So last summer, we got another chance to re repair another bridge which is located in Wake County. So the bridge was suffered was have a very severe deterioration and some rupture strains, and only limited to five towns for all vehicles on the low posting side. So the purpose is I try to extend the service life and increase the low posting so the school bus can pass. Same situation like we, we start with draw holes, we process the MFRP plate, we monitor the uh, pressure force through the witness mark. And the two C channel stand was were re retrofitted in one field of day. Just one day we finished all the repair and the, the beam the, the bridge is still in service now. Here shows some retrofit result like after right after the retrofit and the like roughly like ten months of in service. So after the retrofit, the low posting increased to nineteen to twenty five after installation of a repair. So here I'm going to give some like, recommendation of using this material, or this retrofit design. So we have to use a better, like a very good like pachometer or rebar detector to detect the rebar inside the concrete stem. Based on our experience, like drawing one hose through the C channel, through the C channel beam will take roughly five, three to five minutes. But if, if, if you hit the steel, you jump to 20 to 30 minutes for a single hole. And then we can predict the actual concrete strain using a smith hammer or some like easy, like handy tool. So you can do some prediction of the fracture capacity of a retrofit beam. 
We can call the steel element for repair so we can avoid some corrosion on that. And we use a proper hammer drill to fit inside the spacing of the session and so the, then the DOTPL can work better. And use a permit like the witness mark to monitor the FRP elongation over time. For inspection perspective, like we need monitoring the longitudinal crack and cracking and the ball bearing on the FRP plate. Uh, it's expected to, ex to notice some like a small longitudinal cracking on the both side you can see here. So at the like, first two rows, three rows is fine, but if you're getting too much, it's, we would need additional attention on that. And we also need to observe the concrete condition for the speeding of the at anchor region, which is here. And I check the, tor the, the torque and the tightness of all balls that need to be addressed to 60 foot pounds for the uh, anchor board and the FRP board. And uh, we, can, uh, we need also check the short term and the long term FRP elongation through the witness mark. So NCDOT is really interesting using the matter we developed as a, like a, a standard retrofit uh, repair for the deteriorational beam. So they created like the standard like the document. So we provide some like the drawing inside some installation procedures. So that when the maintenance crew get this document, they can easily understand what to do. From the school part side, uh, we also generate like uh, the easy Excel spreadsheet to predict the uh, on retrofit and retrofit beans, you just plug in some input, some parameters of your, your seasonal beans, your cost tab, and of the system, you are, uh, how many FRP plate you are using, and a force, so you can get the prediction very easily. We also did the repair, not only on seasonal beans, we also did on cost tab. So unlike seasonal beans, it's on, located on the side, the cost tab, you can install the system on the bottom of the bin. And uh, so, I'm seeing a picture here. And uh, with the list picture, it shows the, like, the real like, lab testing we install on the core step, underneath the core step bins. And uh, here's that conclude my presentation. And I would like to thank the DOT, NCDO to fund this project. And, NSF, NSF IC, IUCRC CC Center and the NC State like CFL Laboratory. Thank you. The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.